Good morning, YouTube. A lot's happened since uh, our last video. Um, the fender that I've been waiting on came in, so I went and picked that up, and this morning I'm going to install that. It's a very simple, quick install, so I'll let you join me with that. And then I want to talk about some of the features on the new Honda Goldwing. If you've watched anybody's channel that's a moto vlogger and uh, specifically Honda Gold Wings, you will have likely already seen everything I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it again. Anyway, I'm glad you're with me this morning. Stay tuned, let's get started. Also, since my last video, uh, I caught COVID for the first time in my life. That's been fun. So if there's a little bit of coughing here and there in these videos today, uh, apologies up front. Uh, looking forward to being able to taste again and smell again. Uh, I didn't realize how much I loved the ability to taste, but I do. <laughs> so waiting for that to come back. Okay. On to brighter subject. Let's go. You'll remember from my last video uh, the story about my two-week-old Honda being parked somewhere and some guy backed into it. Very nice guy. Gave me his insurance. We got all that taken care of. Ordered the part and uh, the part is now in. Now the part I'm talking about is the front fender. That's the only damage there was. Um, I'm going to show you. Right here. You can see it scuff the paint, crack the fender. This fender just bolts on, a few bolts here, uh, and bolts off. So, a new fender came in. Looks like the right color. Looks like everything's in order. So I'm going to just unbolt a few things and bolt this on, and uh, back in a second. Okay, I think those bolts are five millimeter bolts. So I'm going to try my five millimeter hex here. Let's see if we can't get these off. Okay, let's get to it. <clears throat> like in addition to the bolt there's a nylon washer you can see that nylon washer on these as well so I want to make sure and save that looks like a much a much larger washer there to figure out what's going on with that. Same sort of setup on the lower lower bolt's got a thin nylon washer, but the upper bolt has some sort of rubber washer and metal housing. Gonna have to figure that out. Set those on the left side, because it's the left side of the bike. I don't think it matters which side of the bike the screws go on. But, let's be consistent. Careful not to let the wrench scratch anything over here. Alright. Got that one out. Take this fender off and see what we got. Okay. 
looks like the inside of the fender has this metal sort of washer grommet thing that I hope I can reuse because I just got the fender from the store. So let me see if I can get these out back in a second. Okay, yeah, those came out pretty easy. There was an inner metal ring, grommet, whatever. And then the rubber grommet just pops right out, squeezes right out of the hole. Um, there's the old broken part. Now I'm going to hang on to this broken part for a while because I'm going to offer you guys something. Rather than me just throw this away, if you're good at patching and painting and you have any interest in this fender, just and you're willing to ship it to yourself completely your expense, I'll give it to you for free rather than throw it away. So I'm going to keep it for a while, see if anybody's interested. Let me know in the comments below. Okay, let's put the other one on now. Okay, got that installed. Here it is. Brand new looking. So nice. Alright. Now we're back to square one with this bike. So back to you in just a minute with uh, just a rundown of some few, a few features on the bike. I do eventually want to get to a ride, um, but I want to start with some of the features. I forgot to mention when I picked up the fender, I also picked up a battery tender, one of the battery tender juniors. I don't need a big one, um, but I had one on my VTX uh, for a good number of years. Uh, I think they're great to have. Uh, I'm going to get that installed. And it comes with leads that you attach directly to your battery. And it's just a quick connect feature. And it's, uh, you know, think of it as a pigtail. And so it connects to your battery. And then different folks bring it different directions. A lot of Goldwing owners will bring it out through here at the batteries back here get it connected they'll bring it out through this um, slot this just decorative slot in here and then it's just easy to grab when you need it uh, you know if your bike's going to set up for a few weeks you might want to connect it just to keep the battery fresh so had one on my last bike i'm going to put it on this bike i won't bore you with that install there's a few videos out there already on how to install it. Chris Caliente's one, go check that out. Um, and I think Cruise Man has something out there as well on it. Back in a bit. Guys, I got a lot of positive feedback on my last video about this bike where I was installing the floorboards and the trunk mats and whatnot. Um, so thank you for that positive uh, feedback. A lot of new conversation, new friends, new subscribers. I'm excited about that. Some of them pretty far away. Anyway, thank you if you're a new subscriber. If you're not already subscribed, uh, it's free. Just click that subscribe button and uh, it's free. That said, I wanted to let you know that I am just a guy. I'm an accountant for a living. That's what I do to get my money. I don't earn money from YouTube. I don't earn money from my photography, although I'm passionate about motorcycles and photography, so you'll see a little bit of that, both of those, on my channel here. But I'm not a mechanic, so when you see me working on the bike, uh, do not take it as the right way to do things, okay? Because I'm just a guy. I'm not a mechanic. So work on your own bike at your own risk. If you don't feel comfortable, go find a mechanic that you do feel comfortable with. Anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Um, now I want to unbox the uh, trickle charger and just show you what's in the box. Hang on. Okay. There we go. Nothing else in the box. We don't need to see that anymore. Let's see what we got here. We've got some alligator clips that 
I believe have that quick connect to the pigtail that I'm going to install on the bike. So if I ever need to jump the bike for whatever reason, I shouldn't, but I can connect these, plug that into the pigtail, connect these to whatever I'm jumping the bike with, and I don't have to take off my side panel. So that's a that's a pretty cool easy feature of this pack. See what we got here. This must be the pigtail I'm talking about that I'm going to install today. It's got a positive and a negative ring, and I just unbolt the screws from the positive and negative terminals of the battery and insert those, screw it back together, and find a place to route the wires so that they don't get pinched or rubbed and ultimately break. That would not be good. Yeah, here we go. And then it's got a connector here. I think it tells you, yeah, the, sh the sheathed side is positive and the exposed side is negative. And then it will just click into the other parts. But anyway, you don't want this thing to get crimped. And this side panel fits very, very close to the bracket that holds the battery in place and that bat that bracket has very sharp edges on it let me see if i can show you all right this is what i'm talking about i took off the side panel this bracket holds the battery in place and it's got really this is pretty sharp so you don't want to i don't think you want to run the cables across here and just put the plastic side panel back on i want to try to connect them Sorry about the angle. Connect them and somehow get them underneath this or behind this and around to pull out that side, uh, to pull out, to be able to pull out that side bent. That's my goal. We'll see if it works. But I don't want them over top of this. I'm afraid they'll get cut. And that could mean shorting out a lot of stuff that I don't know about, but I'm not an electrician. But I've seen a few videos where they're saying you don't want to do that. So beware of that if you're putting one of these in. All right. Only one thing left to pull out of here, and it's the easy part. Oh, instructions. Who needs instructions? <laughs> okay. The plug plugs right into the wall. And then um, the connector, which will connect here to that which connects to your battery and just keeps it topped off. Now, I don't know that I'm going to plug this up every day, but we do have stretches here in Texas of pretty cold weather for a couple weeks at a time. Might not be riding the bike if that's the case, so I'll put this on and just let it trickle the, and maintain the battery over those couple of weeks time span. But day to day, I don't think I'll be hooking this up every night. So. Okay, that's what's in the box. Okay, installation finished. I want to show you what it looks like real quick. Right down here in this little slot is where I've sort of tucked away this pigtail. And then you just, when you need it, you bring it out. Sometimes easier said than done. Okay, took my little pinky, got it. But anyway. It just pops right out. You undo that, you hook it up, you plug it in, you trickle charge it for a while. Then when you're done, just stick it back in there where you can see it. I'm not sure I'll always be able to get to that, but I can always take the side panel off if I have to. I hope I don't have to. That's it for that install. All right, what I'd like to do now is just run through a few features on the dashboard of the bike and some other areas of the bike non-riding type stuff um, and you might have heard it on other channels as I said but it's a good refresher if that's the case if not you're hearing it for the first time maybe I'll save you some time uh, when you get to this uh, your first time so let's take a look you see how the center of that dial is lit up it's lighted when you approach the bike with a key fob that lights up 
that lets you know visibly that it recognizes the key fob is near you and now accessories will turn on the bike will turn on the trunks will unlock all that good stuff from just being near the bike um, oh sorry about my sticky I'm still getting used to the handbrake I don't want to ride off with a handbrake engaged, so I have this to remind myself. <laughs> All right. I think first I'll start up the bike. You turn this knob to the right once and it turns everything on. And then you come over here and hit start. Okay, I closed my garage door, so sorry if there's a, some kind of echo in here, but it's easier to see this dash with the garage door closed. There's not as much glare, so I want to walk you through a few things on this dash. So let's start her up. As I said, that ring is dark right now because I've been standing here for a while, but when you first approach the bike, that ring lights up. It's pretty cool. All right, you turn it on by turning clockwise once. Clockwise twice will shut everything down but accessories so you can still hear your music and whatnot. But I want all the electronics on. And this is the home screen that comes up, for me at least. Um, so anyway, let's go through some of the elements of this, just this layout to start with. Over here, we have three items of information. Well, try to get the glare so that you guys can see this. Hold on a second. Well, it's not easy to see no matter where you are. But anyway, um, I'm going to go through these menu options, and I'll show you real quick how you get to these menu options. You hit this button, it says Select and set if you want to change it. So you just keep hitting select to go through them and then hit set if you want to change them. So that's what I'll be doing that you can't see. All right. Let me hit select as I keep, you can see the little arrow next to these three lines just keeps moving as I hit select. It goes from one to the other. So I'm just going to select the top one. Um, Right now it's showing me the outside air temperature, which is 60 degrees here in my garage today. But if I hit set, it will change it to miles per hour for cruise control. That's the other option for that top blank. It'll tell you how fast you've got your cruise control locked on. And you can tick up and tick down your cruise control and see it visibly right there. I like to keep it on outside air temperature because uh, it's one of the things I love to see when I ride and so that's what that is. So I'm going to hit select to go down to the next blank which is right now set on the odometer, the number of miles total. Sorry you can't see that. 77. It's a new bike. Anyway if I hit set on this it goes to trip A, trip B and back to total miles. Now I've yet to fill up with gas in this uh, vehicle because it was full when I bought it. Um, but I believe I can hold down set under trip A and it's going to reset it. Same deal with trip B. All right, moving on down. Range. Love this. Love this. This is telling me how many miles I can go on how much gas I have left. Uh, my VTX not only didn't have a gas gauge, which by the way is this thing right here. You can see I've got a little less than half a tank left. I'm going to have to fill up soon. But not only did the VTX not have a gas gauge, I, I the only way I knew I was close to running out is a, a amber light would show up on the on the dashboard and they, oh you got to stop in the next I don't know 40 or 50 miles and fill up. 
So I never really quite knew. I love having this. It shows me how far I've got to go uh, with the gas that I have left. If I hit set, it goes to tire pressure. And so this threw me at first. You can see it's showing no tire pressure. I'm like, dang, this thing's broken. The sensors must be broken. Well, then I read the manual. <laughs> And uh, the manual reminded me that this tire pressure monitoring system doesn't display a number until you're above 16 miles per hour. So once I'm riding, yes, this does show, and you can pick front tire and rear tire, and then back to range. So that's your three options, front tire, tire pressure, rear tire, tire pressure, and then range with gas left to go. All right. Then we have just the analog speedometer. Over here we have analog tachometer. It shows I'm in neutral right now. Uh, and it shows I'm in the tour mode. I'll show you in a minute where we go to change modes. Well, matter, matter of fact, might as well do that right now. When you're riding, you don't have to stop, but when you're riding, and maybe it'll do it right now, there's a button over here, a little lever on the back of uh, this handlebar that says mode. And so you can switch through, oh, it will change, sport. And let me tell you, I've put it in sport once already and it changes everything. Shift points, throttle response, good gracious, this thing comes alive when you put it in sport. You got econ, which if you're concerned about saving gas, and sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. And then rain, which just dummies down everything, throttle response, blah, 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 and just makes it very safe and careful when you're driving in rainy conditions. And then again, back to tour, which is the everyday mode. Um, not sure what these elements are. I'm sure somebody in the comments can tell me. I probably remembered it one time, but I've slept since and I don't know. ABS, parking brake is on, so I don't really need to see the sticky if I pay attention. <laughs> to the parking brake indicator, and then that's my fog lights down there. Down here it has your temperature gauge that shows you know hot cold of your engine, your oil, I'm guessing, and then it tells you right here, this little picture of the rear of your bike, it tells you if your stand is down or if some of your, either one of your saddlebags is open or your trunk is open, it will indicate right here. This thing over here is I'm gonna call it rider mode. I'm sure that's not what it's called, I apologize, but it adjusts, electronically adjusts the suspension for whether you are one person, one person with luggage, two people, or two people with luggage. So I guess it makes it stiffer the higher up that hierarchy you go. Uh, I haven't had to use it, I'm only one person, don't have any luggage. Curious to see how that will change the feel of the bike someday when I do use it. And I don't exactly know how to get into it right this second, but I'm sure I'll figure that out. And I'm sure there's other videos out there that can help you with that if you need to know right now. Okay, that's kind of a walk around um, of the layout of the dashboard. Next thing I want to show you is how to get into the fuel cap when you want to add fuel to your bike. Um, the fuel cap is in this section here and it is locked. This is a glove box. It's the only thing that does not get locked by the key fob. It's always open. So be very careful if you ever store anything valuable in here and walk away from the bike. It's available to everybody. So be careful. It's also a place where you hook up your phone. Now there's been some gripes about this. It gets hot in there. Uh, Honda provided this little foam insert that's removable, but help, supposed to help protect your phone. My phone hasn't got super hot, but this bike, we're in the winter right now in Texas, and it's not got very hot yet. So I will let you know in the summer how this does. But this is where I hook up my uh, phone so that I can access Apple CarPlay. And like I said, that does not lock, so be aware of that. But anyway, back on the point. To get to this fuel cap in here, there's a secret to it. 
There's a side panel here that also locks if you don't have the key fob near you, but if you have the key fob, there's a button up here that you press, which opens up this door. Then you gotta come in here inside this door and there's another button that you press that pops open that door. And then you can get to your non-locked gas cap and fill it up with gas. It's locked back, won't open. I close this, push it down, it's locked back. I say it's locked back if, it, if my key fob wasn't here, you couldn't get into it. Anyway, that's how you get to the gas cap. A little bit of a faff, but anyway, that's, that's how it is. Not too bad. Clicking through this button down here called Sources on the left handlebar seems to change my sources for entertainment from FM to AM, and there's, uh, I think, eight or nine presets on both of those, 12 maybe presets. SM Sirius Satellite Radio, which uh, there's a built-in antenna for in the 2023 model. Um, I don't use uh, Sirius XM, so I don't think I'll, I'll, be, I'll be needing this. Uh, Bluetooth, that's attaching to my phone, and then auxiliary. All right, either in your center stack, there's a home button and a back button that will help you navigate that digital screen, okay? Home and back. And even on your handlebars, there's a home and a back. So I'm gonna press home and it takes me to the home screen. I was in audio source and I can move down by turning this knob and pressing enter when I get to the area on the menu that I want to go into. So you can see by me turning this knob, it just moves back and forth. Let's go to navigation. I'm going to hit enter. And you can see the Honda supplied navigation maps. Um, there's been a lot of complaints about this navigation. I've tried to use it. It's not the best and only because I've been spoiled with others. So I tend to use Waze in my Apple CarPlay and we'll get to that in a minute, but that's the navigation for the Honda bike itself. And you can, you know, you can key in a destination. I think you can, I, I don't think you can do waypoints on this, which is surprising for a touring bike why you can't do waypoints, but Anyway, um, a lot of people don't like this navigation. Some people do. Uh, I just have better options, so I use the other options. Okay, phone gets you into your phone, and there is um, speed dials, so if you want to dial somebody quickly, you can set that up. I won't go into that now, but that's all that is. Vehicle settings. A lot of the vehicle settings, well, here you go. This is how you change from that suspension preload I was talking about over a minute ago. So I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to just see you see you can change it to one person with luggage or two people or two people with luggage. So that's how you change and it just alters the suspension. I'm going to keep it where I was. Units, lots of stuff to set here and I'll let you go through that on your own. But this is vehicle settings. I'm going to hit the back button. Audio settings. Lots of stuff. This is the place where you're going to pair your headset to your bike. Um, set your radio pre-selects here. You can do that. Um, let's see what else we got. Phone settings, blue settings, general settings. Yeah. All right. I'm going to hit the back key. And that's pretty much a, a navigation of the main menu options. I want to talk now about pairing your headset to the bike and being able to in, uh, enable Apple CarPlay because there's a trick to it. Everybody seems to think, and I agree, th this is more difficult than it needs to be. So here's my process. Okay, in my helmet, I have a Senna 10U uh, communication device. 
it's internal, not external. That's why I like it. Nothing hangs off the outside of the bike. It's all internal. And it just fits in the back of your helmet like that. Senna 10U. And I like it a lot. It's a few years old. I've had it for a few years. So I'm sure they have better things out there. But this works well for me. It's got a microphone here behind my chin plate so that I don't get any wind. And I can have a conversation on my phone with my wife and she hears no wind noise. She hears me clearly and I hear her clearly through the speakers. Comes with speakers there in the ears. And then this volume button up and down and if you hit both, both buttons at the same time, it's sort of an on off switch. Anyway, that's my setup for the helmet. So to get Apple CarPlay to work, here's what I have to do. I have to first turn on the bike, make sure it's fully set up like this. And then I've got to engage I've got to turn on my helmet communications and let it turn on. And so it does two things. It just said there that it's connected to my phone. So it's the first thing it connects to is my phone. And then it said media connected. And that means it's connected to the bike. Okay. And you can see this little headset with a number one in it. That's connected to my bike. Okay. So that's what that means. But I invariably have to do this twice. I have to now turn it off and turn it on again. And then I've got to see if I can hear my music. I've got to turn the volume up on my music to see if I can hear it in my headset. Yeah, and I can. So once I'm able to hear music coming from my bike back to my headset, I know now that Apple CarPlay will connect successfully. Until I hear that music, it won't connect. So here's what I do. This is going to be hard to do with one hand. I'm going to now connect my phone in here uh, to this cable. Be right back. By the way, I bought this short, short cable off Amazon so that I didn't have the big white uh, Apple cable all strung in here taking up space. So now it's connected and you see on the dashboard a new option, Apple CarPlay. As I said, for whatever reason, that doesn't work the first time, like ever, okay? So I just tuck all that in, tuck it away. I can get rid of this sticky for now. Okay. And then I can move down to Apple CarPlay. Okay, and I move around Apple CarPlay by pressing the up arrow on this dial over here. It's the only way to move around. And you see it just jumps from one thing to the other as I move around. And I press down arrow, it goes back the other way. So it's pretty cool. Um, you can navigate all Apple CarPlay by using the up and down arrows here and then press enter where, when you get to where you want. Um, and I find that that Waze navigation is a much better navigation for me than the stock Honda navigation. Also another point, once I'm in Apple CarPlay, um, I can press the talk button over here and say, Hey Siri, in my headset, and it will go search, I mean it'll bring up Siri, and then I can do anything that you normally could do with Siri. I could say, Hey, call my wife, hey, call my son, send a text. And it's all hands-free and it works quite well. I'm, I'm very pleased with it. So liking this whole setup. So that's pretty much Apple CarPlay in a nutshell and the difficulty it takes to, to get set up, but it works well once I'm in there. Um, like I said, I got to turn the helmet off and on twice. So enough of that. The last thing I want to show you today is this adjustable windshield. I love this windshield. Um, there is a lot of travel. I've got it not all the way down, but not all the way up. You adjust it by a switch here on the handlebar, this switch right here. Right. I'm going to come around here so you can see it. Watch how much it travels. I guess you can only judge it by how far up it moves on the fairing, but watch how far it travels. That's a good it's a good five inches there. And that completely blocks the wind off me as a, as a rider, but it also puts my field of view right through the windshield, my eye level field of view right through the windshield. 
So I don't typically keep it up this high. I normally keep it down either all the way or just slightly higher than all the way. But that is the coolest feature. I'm going to wear it out. <laughs> Now this is the stock windshield and I've heard you can scratch it and you got to be careful how you clean it. There's a windshield out there that a lot of people endorse on their YouTube videos from F4 Customs um, and it's got some coating on it that keeps it from getting scratched, makes it easier to clean. It also is a little wider right here so it sticks out wider. And you can order them in different heights. This is a 20 inch windshield, just stock. You can order a 20 inch from F4 Customs, or they have a shorter one and then a taller one. So they got both. Anyway, if I was to order one, I'd probably order the same size as this because I like this size. And the F4 Customs has a little bit of a lip on the top of the windshield, bends forward like this and that kicks the air up higher over your head than just the stock windshield would and as i said it's a little wider on this side a little wider on the other side so that's good uh, eventually i'm i will probably invest in that windshield it's not a critical must have right away for me um, but yeah there's the adjustable windshield guys love this thing i think that's all i'm going to show you today um, next week or soon uh, we're going to go for a ride on this. I can't wait to take you guys on a ride. Thanks for joining me today.